We have arrived at our last method for solving quadratic equations. Section 2.2.4 involves solving by quadratic formula. This is a reliable formula that always works, and it offers us a way of solving the equation without doing too much algebra. So just a quick recap, we have solved quadratic equations by factoring and the square root method. We have learned how to solve by completing the square. And now we're going to add the quadratic formula. These four methods give us a broad variety of ways to solve, but keep in mind factoring and the square root method are efficient, but they don't always work. Some quadratics don't factor, and some quadratics have that linear term where you can't apply the square root method. The last two methods, completing the square and the quadratic formula, they work on every single quadratic equation there is. So they are reliable. In some cases, we want to go for the fast, efficient solution with factoring or square root method. If those fail, then we can always rely on completing the square or the quadratic formula. So to solve using the quadratic formula, we're going to make sure that our equation is in standard form. That is, all of our terms have to be collected on one side equal to zero. Then we're going to solve this directly for x by applying this formula. The quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. So the first line is what we call a quadratic equation. The second line is a quadratic formula. It's a method for solving the quadratic equation. Make sure that you memorize the quadratic formula. It's something we'll be referring to quite a bit in this class. So to solve by quadratic formula, step one, collect all terms on one side, leaving zero on the other side. Now remember, we did that with the factoring method as well. So for the quadratic formula and the factoring method, we want it equal to zero. That's not true for the square root method or completing the square. Now, once we have all of our terms on one side and it's equal to zero, then we will identify the coefficients a, b, and c, and plug into the quadratic formula. Then we will evaluate using the correct order of operations. And step four is always the same. What are we going to do last? Last, we are going to check. Check by substitution, and that can be as simple as using our calculator. So this is a simple method. It's dependent on our ability to do arithmetic, which is not algebra, so many of you may enjoy this method. So example four, solve each equation using the quadratic formula. The first thing we have to do is make sure that it's equal to zero. In this case, it is not. So I'm going to add one to both sides so that it is equal to zero. Then we will identify a, b, and c. a is the coefficient of the x squared term. So in this case, a is one. b is the coefficient of my linear term or my x term. In this case, negative four. Make sure you get that sign. And c is the constant term. So we're going to plug this into the quadratic formula. And before you learn, before you um, master this, if you don't know the quadratic formula, I would recommend writing this down every single time. If you write your formula down a couple of times, you may just memorize it by accident. 
Okay, so there's our quadratic formula. That's the guide we're going to follow. And we'll plug in our values. So our solution to our equation is x equals negative b. Notice I wrote the negative down from the formula. And b has a value of negative 4. So I've got one negative from the formula, and I'm plugging a negative in for b. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, now be careful here, I want to square all of b, so I'm going to put it in parentheses. b squared is always going to come out positive. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, and c, which is also 1, all divided by 2 times a. Now that everything's plugged in, we are going to simplify with the order of operations. So our first term is a double negative. Negative negative 4 is positive 4. And under our radical, we have negative 4 squared, which is 16. And 4 times 1 times 1 is 4. So we have 16 minus 4, all divided by 2. Make sure you divide the whole thing by 2, not just part of that expression. So simplifying our radicand, 16 minus 4 is 12, so we have 4 plus or minus square root of 12 over 2. Now remember, in section 2.1, we practiced simplifying expressions like this. Let's reduce the square root of 12. If I think of 12 as 4 times 3, then its square root would be 2 square root of 3. And then we're going to divide the whole thing by 4. At this point, we're going to be very careful to separate our fraction before we reduce. So I'm going to divide both of those terms in the numerator by 2 and then reduce by a factor of 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and these 2's cancel. So our result is 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. Now we have two irrational solutions here. One is 2 minus the square root of 3, and the other one is 2 plus the square root of 3. So both of those are irrational solutions, and they would both balance the original equation. Those are, in fact, the correct solutions, and if you want to pause the video for a minute and check those with your calculator, you'll see that they balance the equation. Let's do example B. Negative 4x squared equals negative 12x plus 11. So in this case, we need it equal to 0, and the most efficient way to do that is to just move this one term. So I'm going to add 4x squared to both sides, and I'm going to put it in front over here on the right side. Um, so that we have a, b, and c in order. Our quadratic equation is in descending order. a is the coefficient of x squared, so a is 4. b is the coefficient of x, which is negative 12. And c is 11. So plugging those into our quadratic formula, I'm going to keep my eyes over here on this green formula. x is equal to negative b. That's going to be negative from the formula. b is negative also. Once again, we have a double negative. Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So simplifying, we have negative negative 12, which is positive 12. I'm going to grab my calculator to evaluate what's under the radical. We have negative 12 squared, make sure you get that in parentheses, minus 4 times 4 times 11. So our radicand has a value of negative 32, plus or minus square root of negative 32 over 8. Notice we have a negative under that radical, so we know the result is going to be imaginary. Now, let's think of the square root of 32 as 16 times 2 times negative 1, right? The square root of 16 will simplify, 2 will not, and the negative 1 becomes an i. So we end up with 4i square root of 2. So square root of negative 32 gives us 4i square root of 2, and we're going to divide the whole thing by 8. Now remember, be careful here. Don't reduce until you have split up your fraction. So I'm going to write each term over 8, 
and then we'll go back and cancel like factors. 12 over 8, uh, both of those numbers have a common factor of 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. On this side, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we end up with two imaginary solutions, 3 halves plus or minus i square root of 2 over 2. So it's possible to get irrational solutions for quadratic equations. It's also possible to get imaginary solutions for quadratic equations. Now keep in mind, both of these are the correct answers, and you can check those with substitution using your calculator. Let's do one more example for good measure, finishing off our quadratic formula. The first step, remember, is very important. Everything has to be equal to zero, so I'm going to start by adding three to both sides. Next, we identify A. A is three, and we identify B as two, and C is three. Then, keeping our eye on the quadratic formula that I have written in green up there, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, and c, which is 3, all divided by 2 times a. Once we have it plugged in, then we do our arithmetic. Our radicand here, we have 4 minus 4 times 3 times 3, or 4 minus 36. So I'm going to double check my arithmetic. 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times 3 times 3, and we end up again with negative 32. So we have negative 32 under our radical. Now over there on example B, we simplified square root of negative 32 as 4i square root of 2. So I'm going to use that calculation here. Whoops. Get some room. We have negative 2 plus or minus 4i square root of 2 all divided by 6. So we'll divide each of those terms in the numerator by 6. The common factor of my uh, first fraction is 2. Negative 2 6 reduces to 1 third, and 4 6 reduces to 2 thirds. We can call that 2i square root of 2 over 3. So our solution set again has imaginary numbers. I'm going to separate them into two individual solutions, both of which you could plug into your calculator, store, and check. We will learn later on when we turn these into two variable functions that it is significant that we have imaginary solutions that will affect the graph. So this completes section 2.2. You have four methods for solving quadratic equations. They are, once again, factoring and the square root method. Those two are fast and efficient, but they don't always work. And we also have completing the square and quadratic formula. Those two work on every quadratic equation. This is one of our tougher sections, so work hard, persevere, don't be discouraged. Um, it does lighten up in later units. All right, best of luck on your homework.